Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about all the women in the Skibidi Toilet series. I'll show you all the Skibidi women you might not have noticed. I'll also tell you all the secrets of camera woman, speaker woman, and TV woman. We'll compare them and try to figure out who's the strongest. As always, get your tea and snacks ready. It'll be interesting. Let's go. Let's start at the beginning. In episode two, we see this Skibidi urinal, but it's not a woman. It's a regular Skibidi who's wearing a green wig. I've told you in past videos that Skibidi toilets probably used to be people. And I noticed that when we see humans in the early episodes, there are many women among them. But when the humans are gone, we see that most of the Skibidi are male. But there are also women among the toilets. Here, for example, in episode four, an ordinary woman turned into a Skibidi toilet. Here in episode six, there is a spinning Skibidi toilet with a woman's head. By the way, this face looks a lot like this dancing woman right here. In episode 7, these two Skibidi toilets are also female. So why do we see most of the male toilets in the following episodes? I think Skibidi like humans have hierarchies or something. Maybe there are places where they live as families. Then those Skibidi toilets we see are kind of soldiers. They're specially trained to go into battle. But there are also peaceful Skibidi toilets like this one here. They just do their daily toilet business, raising little Skibidi kids. That's just my crazy assumption. In episode 10, there's also a Skibidi woman but these guys also look like peaceful toilets. In episode 14 here, these two Skibidi toilets also have female heads, but I'm not sure about that. Further on, there were very few female characters, but you can still see them among the others. Here in episode 24, the POV cameraman destroys the female Skibidi toilet. And here in episode 41, one of the Skibidi bathtub heads is a woman. Now let's talk about the Alliance. While the Skibidi Toilet's female characters are no different from the rest, the female agents are much stronger. But not all of them are. The first time we saw Camera Woman was in episode 29, but it was a bad experience. She was destroyed. All that lady did was dance with the speaker men. But then Defuque started adding new female characters. And the first one was a TV woman. And damn, he made her too strong, I think. In fact, the entire race of TV men is hypnotic, and it's a powerful weapon against the Skibidi. Yeah, there's eye protection, but remember these guns, combined with hypnosis, it's very powerful. But despite all this, TV Woman has other powerful abilities. She can ignite her opponent. Her head can also exist on its own, making her invincible. I can't even imagine what would have to happen to destroy her. I think the only way to do that is to break the TV and the body together. Also, her head is a separate parasite. She can take control of the Skibidi toilets. I think it only works on mechanical Skibidi. I've already told you my theory that there are two types of toilets. The first are the regular ones. They just turned into toilets and previously were humans. They're alive and can't be controlled. The second are sort of cyborgs. They're usually the inventions of a scientist. They're highly improved with mechanized parts. I think the TV woman's head can take control of these Skibidi, I mean their electronics. The same way the scientist's Skibidi parasites work. But since all agents are robots, they can be easily controlled. The TV woman can also teleport. This ability is powerful in itself. She can quickly move to a safe place if something goes wrong. But more than that, a TV woman can teleport someone with her. Well, that's what the rest of TV man can do too. These guys also have blades. TV woman was able to disarm the parasite and cure Titan speaker man with them. In general, all TV men look very suspicious to me. That said, TV woman did a lot for the Alliance. She rescued wounded agents in episode 49. She disarmed a glitchy Skibidi toilet in episode 54. She also cured Titan Speakerman. I don't think she'd betray the Alliance, but she did betray someone else, if I may say so. The same cameraman she saved in episode 49 fell in love with her, and now he's trying to get her love in every way he can. But as we can see, their feelings are not mutual. We call him Simp Cameraman. So in episode 57, he was badly injured. But the TV woman didn't pay attention to him. She decided to save Plungerman. I think it was the right thing to do, because he's a good fighter. But our simp has clearly lost hope. But we're not talking about him in this video. Next, we saw the second woman in the series, Camera Woman. Her camera is different from the other cameramen. Also, when she appeared, Plunger Cameraman's camera began to glow. I thought we'd see more cameramen with the new camera, but it hasn't happened yet. Apparently, she's a special invention. She's some kind of sniper. The camera woman has a fighting mode. She turns into a turret. By the way, the darts she fires paralyze her opponents. That's how she was able to paralyze G-Man in episode 57 and help cure Titan Speakerman. It's also how we saw her quickly disappear from the frame in episode 53. 
In episode 52, she quickly moved from the pole to Plungerman. I have two possibilities. Either she's teleporting or she's making a dash to move quickly. We never saw a love line between her and Plungerman, by the way. Perhaps we can indirectly see it by Plungerman's glowing camera. It's like the camera woman kindled the fire of his soul. Notice that in episodes 52 and 53, they were together. But in episode 55, Plungerman went to Dubai in the Titan Cameraman Squad. Then Camera Woman wasn't around and we see that his camera isn't lighting up. Yeah, and he looks kind of sad. In episode 57, his camera is on again. And we know that Camera Woman was there. But when the infected Titan hurt Plungerman badly, the camera went out. I think it put out the hope that the Camera Woman would come to the rescue. But unfortunately, her darts only work on living beings, and Titan is completely robotic. She couldn't help Plungerman. I think at the end he just lost hope, but everything will be okay. Plungerman will be repaired, I'm sure of it. Well, now it's time to talk about Speaker Woman. I told you all about her in the last video. She's agile, she's strong, she likes to have fun and enjoy herself. Meanwhile, her abilities are much more interesting than Camera Woman's. She can throw objects, projectiles, and anything small in size. She has an amplifier for that. I won't go into detail about her abilities, but I will tell you something new. When I was releasing the analysis of episode 61, I didn't see a short video. And now it's time to talk about what secret Defouk left for us in it. Remember these pictures from the first episodes? I already told you that this is Kate Bush, the British singer. So it's her song that plays in episode 61 when Speaker Woman appears. It's Running Up That Hill. It turns out that Boom is actually inspired by her work. If you search for this song on YouTube, you can see a comment from Defouk made a year ago. I'm not sure, but maybe in the next episodes we will see another connection between Speaker Woman and Kate Bush. By the way, this song is the most popular song on her YouTube channel. Now it's time to analyze which of the Alliance women is the strongest. In general, they are all made stronger than the usual agents of each race. But let's compare them. The TV woman contributed the most to the Alliance victory. She also has the ability to attack opponents by area. If she fails, she has the ability to teleport. Also, if you rip her head off, she will not be destroyed. The disadvantage is that TV Woman can't attack opponents at long range. But in close and medium range combat, she is stronger than the others. TV Woman was able to defeat Glitchy Toilet. I think it's unlikely Camera Woman would have been able to handle him. She'd have one or two shots. If she missed, he'd destroy her. Maybe she can teleport too, but it's not certain. She also has auto-guided darts, and then she could destroy the glitchy toilet. But we don't know that for sure. What Speaker Woman could have done to stop him, I don't know. A sound wave probably wouldn't have been able to stop that mad Skibidi. Anyway, all we've seen is her dealing with one Skibidi toilet. And what about the G toilet? The camera woman was able to paralyze him. I think TV Woman would have managed the same by trying to hypnotize him, or taking control of his jetpack and lasers. Whether Speaker Woman could defeat G-Man is the big question. So far, I don't see an ability that would help her do that. I think the strongest would be TV Woman, and Speaker Woman is the weakest. But maybe we haven't seen all of her abilities. Maybe in the next episode she'll be stronger. And I still think Speaker Woman is the coolest character. She's hilarious and shows a lot of emotion, which is cool. I remind you that I have a Discord server now. I'm waiting for you all. And the link is in the description under the video. Put a like. Subscribe to the channel. That was me, Iso Toilet. See ya!